All right, so I have everybody muted and uh, you know how that goes, but if you have a question or a comment at any point, just feel free to unmute. Uh, you can do the raise the hand feature if you want, or you can just unmute and interrupt and that's fine too. Um, so good evening, everyone. It's uh, I'm so glad to be able to, uh, to have this meeting with everyone that comprises not just uh, those students who would become bar and bat mitzvah two years from now, but uh, also those who will become bar and bat mitzvah one year from now in 2024, and even those who will become bar mitzvah in June. Um, so because of COVID, it kind of uh, uh, wreaked havoc with this schedule and how B'nai mitzvah have been done. Some of you had a student who became bar and bat mitzvah during the pandemic. And that was uh, a, an interesting experience, uh, as you know. Uh, and now that we're out of it, uh, seemingly so far, uh, we're back to normal when it comes to uh, bar and bat mitzvah uh, on a Shabbat morning in synagogue with lots of friends and family in the congregation there to celebrate and with a kiddish luncheon afterwards. So. I I handed every, I um, I attached uh, what is our bar and bat mitzvah handbook. So hopefully, if you haven't had a chance to go through it yet, you will have a chance to go through it. I just want to provide us with a a general background as to what becoming bar and bat mitzvah is all about, how we do it here at Share Tefillah, because I'm sure. Many of you, if not all of you, have been to uh, B'nai Mitzvah services uh, in other synagogues. Um, and everybody, every synagogue, there's certain things that could be uh, common to all synagogues, and there's certain things that could be unique to each particular synagogue. So I just want to, I just want to go through why, why we do this and how we try to make it as special as possible for each and every one of you. So becoming bar and bat mitzvah means literally becoming, becoming a son or daughter. Bar is the Aramaic word for son. Bat is the word for daughter, son or daughter of the commandments. And so according to Jewish tradition from 1800 years ago, Boys become bar mitzvah, responsible for observing the commandments at age 13 and one day, according to the Jewish calendar, not the secular calendar. So if you're born uh, today, March 14th, your birthday is the 20th of Adar. So it's 13 and one day for uh, the month of Adar. That's That's how we figure the, the birthday and girls uh, become bat mitzvah at 12 and a day. It's uh, for the rabbis, it was a matter of physical maturity that determined whether one is obligated uh, to, to become a, a full-fledged member of the community with all the responsibilities that go with it. Um, for the longest time within the conservative movement, uh, boys and girls become bat mitzvah and bar mitzvah at the same age, 13 and a day. But there's a little bit of flexibility for girls for determining a date of a, of a bat mitzvah. Uh, you could do it earlier than the 13th birthday. Let's say the birthday is in the winter time, and we don't generally uh, give out dates for January and February just to be on the safe side with weather. So uh, we could go earlier in the fall, as opposed if it was a boy's birthday, having to go later into the spring um, for the to determine the date. So we we do this, uh, uh, and so we celebrate becoming uh, entering into the uh, responsibilities of uh, the adult Jewish community at a service where most of the adult Jewish community would be in attendance in order to kind of welcome the new uh, the new member to the community. And that's why for us, 
uh, and most conservative synagogues, bar and bat mitzvah happens on Shabbat morning. It's the most popular, most well-attended attended service of the week. Uh, and it's not the only service where the Torah is taken out of the ark with an opportunity to be called up to the Torah, but it is the service during the week in which most uh, many people are in attendance. So for us, the idea is uh, not to have bar bat mitzvah just be a family event, a private event, but rather to celebrate your participation in the community with the community in attendance. So there have been B'nai Mitzvah that have occurred not on Shabbat morning, and that's mainly because uh, of a student's, um, mainly because of a student's learning issues, um, that there's a lot to, to learn to participate in the Shabbat morning service, learning uh, what's called the Haftarah, the portion from the prophet section of the Bible, learning how to read the Hebrew of it and sing that Hebrew, learning the prayers that, that are in the service as well. There's a, there's a lot that to, to learn and to prepare for, um, and some students might not just be able to do that, and so there are other options um, out there available. But we, we assume that everybody will be able, with enough preparation with Cantor Adina, to be able to participate um, um, beautifully on, on, at a Shabbat morning service. So um, that's the idea. Be, behind, what, idea number one of becoming Bar Bat Mitzvah to celebrate your participation in the community, your, member, um, your membership in the community, with the community, with you, to celebrate this life cycle event in your lives. The other th thing about becoming Bar Bat Mitzvah is not just celebrating, this, uh, participating in the service, but also uh, to choose a, what we call a mitzvah project, some kind of act of, uh, of social action, charity kind of uh, activity to also show, hey, I'm part of the community now, I wanna give back. And um, so that's that's another element of becoming bar mitzvah that as as you are uh, as it gets closer uh, eight months before the the date when you start working with Cantor Adina that would be the time to think about what kind of mitzvah project you might want to do and there's no there's no right project to do it could be as simple as suggesting people to make a donation to a particular organization or it could be something as complicated as giving time to uh, uh, to a particular organization, volunteering there um, several hours uh, or, or whatnot. It's, uh, it's, all, it's all creative, whatever you like, whatever you're interested in, uh, could be the Bar Bat Mitzvah Project. And we'll work with you um, when the time comes to, to help suggest projects if you um, if you can't come up with one on your own. So the so again, just to just to put it into perspective, the idea of becoming bar and bat mitzvah is to celebrate with the community, um, to participate in the service as the first time as an adult member of the Jewish community, and to express through the mitzvah project a way of giving back to the community as well. So that's what becoming bar and bat mitzvah is all about. I wanted to, um, so like I said, um, usually uh, it's not just about participating in a service, it's also kind of celebrating with the community with, with a kiddush uh, luncheon. Uh, uh, there's no requirement as to how extensive that luncheon should be, but uh, th it is common practice to, to sponsor whatever kinds of refreshments that would happen after the service. So that's why we have Fran Kensky here to uh, to talk a little bit about how that works. So Fran, if you want to unmute yourself and just share a little bit. Uh, I want to also wish you can't all you. Mazel Oh, you can't hear me? Yeah, now we can. Oh, I also want to wish you all a Mazel Tov on your upcoming Bar and Bat Mitzvahs. It's a very exciting time. I've personally been through it three times, so I kind of know what you're going through. Uh, as far as what kind of a kiddish you want to have, you would reach out actually to Brianna, who has the kiddish forms, and you can see what your options are. It can be as simple or as elaborate as you want. Uh, it's really up to you. 
uh, we ask that you have, I know the handbook says eight weeks, four weeks is fine. If you can let Brianna know four weeks in advance, once she knows, then she would communicate with me. You're also all welcome to reach out to me if you have certain questions, uh, if you want a bar bat mitzvah cake, but you don't like chocolate, you want it vanilla, you, know, you can reach out to me for all of those details. Um, I think that's kind of it. I mean, it's it's pretty simple. Brianna's got the form, so you reach out to her and you're welcome to ask me questions at any time. I will just add that, uh, you know, thanks to Fran and Sisterhood, we have a very nice kiddish after services every Shabbat and they don't just appear by themselves. It's, there's a crew of volunteers every week that with the kiddish captain that uh, that sets the, the food out on platters. So it'd be uh, wonderful uh, to be part of the, that, uh, to, to be on that rotation so that you're helping each other out in the synagogue out and uh, at uh, at various times and in, in the in the years ahead. Yeah, I'll have to look at the list to see if everybody is is on the schedule because um, well, I can work that out also with Brianna, but we we ask that you volunteer six times during the year that you can help us with other kiddishes or it could be for one of your child's classmates. And that way you know, you know that everybody helps each other. And and that's kind of how we do it. So, if you and and I will just say that if you haven't noticed already, we are a, a low key informal congregation uh, where we tend to be doing things for ourselves rather than hiring catering crews to be doing this for us. Yeah, come in the kitchen. It is so much fun. You will have a great time. Uh, that's right. All right. Thanks, Fran. Um, Brianna, did you want to add anything? Um, logistics? Well, I, I guess on the plug for, for volunteering, too, you know, it also gives you a sense of what the Kiddush will look like that you'll, you know, be sponsoring in the future. It probably will make the form make more sense to some degree as well. Um, and with the form for the Kiddush, um, we go through that together. Um, like I can send it to you ahead of time so you can look at it. Um, but then we also go through it together as well to make sure I can answer any questions you have. Um, and so you're not completely perplexed while while filling it out. Um, so if anyone's interested in what it looks like, I can send it to you. Uh, you know, just let me just let me know, reach out whenever. Um, we did just update it recently. Uh, although for people whose whose bar bat mitzvahs are a couple of years out, it might change still after that. But but you'll at least get an idea of what it looks like. So I, I really don't want to overwhelm you with a lot of details tonight to make you anxious in any way. That's what the handbook is there for. We just have uh, live people tonight to be able to say some of the things that have been in the handbook and just to give you a, a sense of, of what, what it is. I, I do want to just talk again. I don't want to talk a lot of details about the service, but I, I you know, and, and how the service works. I'll meet with each one of you. Uh, starting two to three months before the bar or bat mitzvah. So that means uh, Druxmans and Feldmans uh, for the June uh, 2023 B'nai Mitzvah. I'll be reaching out to you in the next few days about setting up a time to meet with each of you as we prepare for the B'nai Mitzvah this coming June. But that's really the time to start sitting down and, and talking the details about the service and who in your family you want to give honors, honors to and things like that. But I just want to say in general about that, that um, we try to accommodate as many uh, honors that you'd like to distribute to uh, to family. So there are, you know, some of the bigger conservative synagogues in the area might limit your honors to maybe three that you can give out. You can give out a lot more honors than that. There are uh, seven honors that you can give out for uh, having the blessing at the Torah. There's uh, ark openings to give out, carrying the Torah to give out, lifting and dressing the Torah, English readings to give out. So there's lots, lots of things to give out. And uh, you know, certainly you don't have to feel like you have to give out everything. But I'm just saying that there's there's plenty of honors to be able to give out. Our um, our, we try to be as accommodating to uh, all Jews and non-Jews alike. 
uh, with, uh, with these honors as well, understanding that uh, there are many parents uh, who are not Jewish, who have been very much involved in raising their Jewish children uh, and providing a Jewish education for them. And so um, uh, though the tradition is to be called to the Torah, uh, you have to be Jewish to recite the blessings at the Torah, a, a non-Jewish uh, parent can go to the Torah along with the Jewish parent and be there at the Torah as the Jewish parent recites the blessing. Uh, and so be there at non-Jewish people can open the ark. So if they're non-Jewish grandparents, usually the grandparents are the ones to open the ark first. Uh, so certainly non-Jewish people can open the ark. So we are, though it might sound like I'm being judgmental and referring to people as non-Jewish people, I, 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 I don't intend it to sound that way. I just wanted to say that... Um, uh, so I, I'm one of the uh, old school rabbis in that I was trained at a time when there was great debate in the uh, in the Jewish community about the role of of uh, non-Jewish parents in in family life. And though that is a moot question today, uh, uh, 35 years ago when I was in rabbinical school, it it was not. Uh, moot at all. So I'm um, just saying that um, though this might sound like it should be expected, it uh, it took some time in our congregation and many conservative congregations to reach this point of uh, of uh, almost uh, full inclusivity of all uh, in in the service. So uh, and we are uh, we are happy to do that, and we're happy to uh, to include. Uh, everyone as much as possible. Um, so again, uh, what, as, as the bar and bat mitzvah approaches, and certainly for those in 2025, when we don't, I mean, I've given you a, a, a suggested date, but uh, you need to get back to me to say, yes, you'd like that date, uh, or you'd like a different date. And there, there's one family in 2024 that we still have to uh, decide a date on, um, so with, there's plenty of time to do that. As you see, there are only five, six B'nai Mitzvah a year. So there are plenty of dates. We're not competing with anybody else. You're not doubling up with anybody else. So there's time. Uh, and as it gets closer, we'll figure out how we can incorporate as many people in the family as possible uh, in, in the service. Um, so that's... Uh, that's really all that I wanted to say. Do you have, do you have, any of you have any questions about any of this so far? Unmute, uh, raise a hand if you have any, any questions. Yeah, there's Beth. I have a, Go ahead. Yeah, quick, and I should probably know, but. That's okay, go. <laughs> um, I'm wondering if there's a, is there a cost? Uh, to um, to use the space, is there a, is there an additional cost, or I mean, is it is it included for the so, members? Um, if it's right after the service, the kiddush, no, there's there's no cost for having the social hall then. If you have if you're thinking about like having a a dinner later or some party some other time there would be a rental charge for that, but there's a different rate for members than there would be for non-members. Am I right, Brianna? Yes. <laughs> yeah, the, the kiddish, yeah, you you pay for, like you pay for the food essentially, but you don't pay for the space itself. Right. Um, but yeah, if, you, if you're having a part or, party later in the evening, then yeah, then there is a, there is a rental fee and, and a rental okay. agreement. Okay, got it, thank you. Any other? Any other questions? Um, for blessings with the Torah, can you have groups of people? Like, oh, yes. Um, yes. Like yes. aunts and uncles in a group, or does it have to be just married couples? Because I think in the in the handbook, it says only married couples. Right, can come right. Together. So we've adjusted that also. There, there's a limit to how much room there is for people to be up there on, on the Bima. So... Um, uh, without it being too overcrowded. So we like to, to have two, maybe three at the most per aliyah, 
because once you are finished with your blessings, you stay there and the next person having the blessings is called up. So at, it could be six people then right there besides the person reading Torah and the two other people who stand on either side of that uh, of that uh, table as well. So it could get it can get too crowded. So two or three people. So if you have like three cousins, if you have, uh, you know, if it's like four aunts and uncles and that, that's just the way to accommodate, yes, we can do we can do that too. But again, I'll meet with you soon and we can go through that list and see how we can how we can make it work. Any other? Any other questions or comments? Just makes you hunger. Yes, go ahead, Abby. Um, Rabbi, can you describe what it's like to meet with Cancer Adina? Like, how is that scheduled and how many times uh, do you do that? Right. So, uh, Cancer Adina usually will reach out to you about eight months before the date and uh, suggest uh, uh, times, uh, work with you with times once a week for like 45 minutes. Uh, it's usually on Zoom. She lives in Virginia. Um, sometimes she comes in person. Um, so it, it just depends. It depends on the student and depends on how, how, this, how, the, um, how the, the, the tutoring, how the practicing is going. Sometimes she'll meet twice a week. Uh, often as it gets closer, she meets twice a week with a student. So it, it depends on, on how the student is progressing and, you know, how the Hebrew reading is, how the music is going, learning the tunes and things like that. So um, in general, for everybody, she reaches out eight months ahead of time. And in general, it's once a week. But that, that could change uh, for each student uh, uh, based on their learning styles. Anything else? So I will I, I just again, uh, for those in 2025, take a look at the email if you can find it that I originally sent to you uh, a month or so ago with suggested dates. And get back to me uh, soon about whether you'd like to keep that date or like to change the date. Um, 2024, I think we're all set except for one one family that's uh, that needs to get back to me. And um, so I, I thank you all very much for for being here this evening. Thank you to Fran and Brianna as well for making their themselves available as well. Take a look at the handbook. And as you know, we're always available anytime. Reach out, email, phone, however you want to do it. Uh, and uh, more than happy to meet with you as often as, as you'd like to answer your questions. So have a good night, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Mazel Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.